We all have our ups and downs, Father. But through it all, through it all, we know that we have a Savior. A Savior that loves us. And all you ask is just for us to just trust you. Put our trust in you. And we know that everything will be okay. We love you, Lord. You first loved us. You loved us enough to send your only begotten Son to the cross. Shed his precious blood for us all. The blood of bulls and goats was to no effect. But the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you. Thank you. And this is our prayer this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the church say amen.
that no man can close. I don't know about you, but I've worked and done the best I can. It's just good to know that I'm standing in the need. somebody that thinks enough of you to bless you. Oh, I wish I had somebody.
breath is on me. I think it's 8 8.30. And Sister Stanford does have an announcement. I'm going to ask her to come at this time for her announcement. Yes, yeah. okay, so the same announcement. Good morning. Good morning. As we approach Martin Luther King um, Jr. weekend, next week is a time of remembrance and reflections. And there's an organization that I want to tell the church about that we learned at our December meeting. The organization is the Equal Justice Initiative. Now they do many things, but the most important thing they do is a community remembrance project. This project is to put up historical markers in cities and towns dedicated to people who had died by the violent death of lynching. And as they guided us through our meeting last month, they, uh, they were telling us historical factors that in North Carolina, between 1877 and 1950, 100 people died in North Carolina due to this violent crime of lynching, with six of them being here in Salisbury, Rowan County. Death so horrible that today they are considered acts of domestic terrorism and they are federal hate crimes. And so the Equal Justice Amendment or Equal Justice Initiative guides cities through the process so healing can begin. And the city, if they accept the program, there are many things that have to be done. Uh, first thing, and I, I want to say Reverend Bruna of Trinity Presbyterian Church did our research and searched historical documents and presented all of those documents to the city of Salisbury. Once that's done, the community, the city has to sponsor films and um, videos to open up conversation, talk, to talk for different races to talk about this crime. The city also has to write a letter uh, saying that it did happen here based on the evidence. And then lastly, the city uh, issues a proclamation of reconciliation that it did happen here, they acknowledge it, and that through this proclamation that they are sorry for it. So it's a formal apology by the city. And once all that is done, the Equal Justice Initiative presents to the city a marker. Our historical marker is located on Church Street, right where Martin Luther uh, Parade lined up. And if you have not been back there to see it, I encourage you to go by there, see it, read it, even you know, take your kids. It is to generate conversation so this crime will never happen again. And if you know Dr. Bruno, if you see him out and about, thank him for presenting all the documentations and everything in the city that came on board to initiate this initiative. Um, in addition to that, the Martin Luther King Parade is next Saturday. They'll have activities at the Civic Center from 12 to 1. Uh, Sunday, as Reverend Bracken said, the his humanitarian award, and then breakfast. And you have to reserve your place to go to breakfast, but it's sponsored by the city and it is free. And I have a telephone number if you see me at the church that if you want to go to the breakfast, that you can call and reserve your place. Uh, the Equal Justice Initiative have put up markers in 20 states so far. They gave us a very nice booklet on the work that they do. And if you'd like more information, you can visit their website at www.eji.org. And I'm close with this that they say, there can be no reconciliation and healing without remembering the past. Thank you. Thank you. Final announcement on next Saturday at 10 o'clock, we will be meeting with those who are part of the food ministry here at Jerusalem Baptist Church. If you would like to join the food ministry, uh, some very 
are important organizational things that we'll be talking about and putting forward as we move forward with our food ministry. Thank you for that. There is a word for us today found in the 34th Psalm. And I simply want to read verses 19 through 22. The Psalm 34. Psalm of David. Psalm 34. You may have it say amen. Psalm 34, sharing from the New International Version of the Bible. Verse 19, we find these words recorded. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. Foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. God's word for God's people. At this election from the choir, I'm going to talk to you from this subject. When life bottoms out. When life bottoms out.
if thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, where else shall I go? Lord, we pray right now that you would bring our wondering minds into focus. Somebody here today, Lord, may come to know you in a way they've not known you before. This is some hard may realize, Lord, that you've done great things, Lord. And that we will yield unto thee this hour. Father, we thank you for the visitation of your precious Holy Spirit. And now, Lord, be with us, Lord, as we sit here in contemplation and in meditation. Seeking to hear a word from you, Lord. And Lord, be with this, your preacher, Lord, for I have nothing except what come by thee. Now, Lord, bless us as only you can. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh Lord, be with us as only you can do. For these and all the blessings we ask and we pray, it is in the marvelous, majestic name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we ask this prayer. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. When life bottles out, life can be a very strange. Because there are times that sometimes we find ourselves on top of the world. Or so we feel that way. Amen. And as time goes on, that there are other times that we feel like we're on the bottom. Amen. Has anybody ever been there? Amen. All right. Circumstances and occurrences can flip the script. And one day you can feel like you're on top of the world. And you can feel the power and presence of God so mightily working in your life. And then when certain things happen and unfold, you feel like you've hit the bottom. Oh, if you haven't been there, you keep living. And you'll come to understand what I'm talking about. Amen. In Psalm 24. Psalm written by a man by the name of David. He writes this song because he himself has been anointed future king of Israel. But the problem is that there is another king by the name of Saul who seems to be standing in his way. And we know that David has tried to do everything humanly possible. To give King Saul all the respect and due and honor that is due to him. While waiting for God to open up a door for him to be king of Israel. But my beloved, so oftentimes for every child of God, sometimes there's only so much you can take. <laughs> David has experienced victories. Most notably, he has killed the Philistine giant by the name of Goliath. Mm. And has won the hearts of all the people. Mm. Only to discover that the king, named Saul, has become a jealous enemy. All right. And my beloved, so oftentimes in life, when you think you're on top of the world, people will try to pull you to the bottom. Amen. Amen. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? When some loved one or family member whom you think has your back, ah. and all of a sudden they turn on you. Amen. One day you're on top of the world, and now you feel like you've been pulled to the bottom. Amen. This is David's lament as he writes this song, because in uh, 1 Samuel, he is the one that is running for his life from King Saul. If we look around and we look at uh, 1 Samuel and we look at a particular passage of scripture found in the 21st chapter, which is the precursor for this song, we find that David has had enough of money. By virtue of fear, 
He has fled from the presence of Saul and gone into Philistine territory. Mm. My beloved, so oftentimes when you're dealing with folk, when you're dealing with situations, uh -huh. it will cause you to go some places that God didn't tell you you needed Amen. to go. Amen. 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 Somebody needs the church Come on now. because they're fed up right. with what somebody said. But you better be careful where you go. Don't allow your emotions to lead you, but you need to be guided by the Spirit of God. And realize that no matter where you find yourself at, that it's always a lot. You and I cannot think that we can go through life and be on top of the world all the time. Amen. Because regardless of where you find yourself at, there's always a bottom. Amen. I want you to know today that I thank God for the bottom. Because sometimes if it wasn't for the bottom, there would be no way we could come up. Right. I would say that's right. Come on, come on. So David has had enough. And in 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter, he runs into Philistine territory, mm -hmm. who are the natural enemies of Israel. Yes, sir. Yes. One would think that after all that God had done for Israel, uh -huh. the certain David would understood that if the Lord had allowed him to have victory at one point in time that he was able to have victory in the present time in the situation that he was going through. Uh -huh. But in fear of his life mm -hmm. Terry, he's afraid of King Saul. He's tired of running. He's tired of all the mess uh -huh. that comes with the king. Right. And he runs for his life. He goes into the enemy territory. Mm -hmm. And as a king by the name of Achish, or Referred to as Abimelech. Uh -huh. While he is there, he pretends to be mad because he's wow. fearful that the king is going to kill him. Uh -huh. First of all, the people recognize him. Yeah. Um, and if you're a child of God, it doesn't matter where you find yourself uh -huh. in life, people will recognize uh -huh. God's mark that is upon uh -huh. you. And when he gets into Philistine territory, they begin to whisper, they begin to ponder, they begin to say, Isn't this David? Right. Who's killed his 10,000 and Saul has killed his thousand? Isn't this the same one that has done great rich? And because he has killed the Philistine giant by the name of Goliath, he's fearful for his life. Uh -huh. See, when your emotions get a hold of you, you'll do all kinds of prayers. All right. Well, I often pray, Lord, now give me a congregation yeah. that'll be spirit led uh -huh. and not emotional or anything. Right, right. I wish I had some more to your emotions. I get a hold of it will cause you to do some crazy things. Yeah. Yeah. But when you feel frustrated and you're tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you find yourself on a bottom, right. it can lead you to do a whole lot of difficult things. Right. I wish I had some other Come on, So David, in fear of his life, began to pretend to be a bad man. Mm -hmm. To let the drools uh, Ripped down on his beard and began to mock the doors and act like he's a crazy man. Uh -huh. And the king dismisses him because he feels like David can do him no harm uh -huh. because he's lost his mind. Right. My beloved, we don't have to pretend to be anything. Right. When God has our back, he has our back. So it is we get to the psalm that we're talking about today, this 34th psalm, and David realizes. That even though he finds himself on the bottom, uh -huh. that God is still with him. Right. All right. And my beloved, for you and I today, we need to have the blessed assurance that sometimes when we go through life, right. sometimes life's going to bottom out. Yes. Right. But it's not about hitting the bottom, but it's about who meets you when you're uh, on the bottom. Well, I wish I had some other well, questions. Some of us know beyond the shadow of doubt that if it had not have been for the Lord on our side, a long time ago. Yeah. Some of us would not be here this morning if it had not been for the grace of our Lord and Savior yeah. Jesus Christ that put us in our right mind and told us to run on a little while. Amen. Is there anybody to test Amen. So even when you're on the top, you have to realize that the bottom is a reality. Uh -huh. That if we live long enough, that there are occurrences, that there are situations that will try to pull you down yeah. and take you to your lowest yeah. point of living. And this is where David finds himself at. Before he can come up, he has recognized that he is on the bottom. Uh -huh. And what I like about the Lord is, is that God will meet us right ever, wherever we find ourselves. Yes, yes, in other words, we serve a God who's not afraid of the bottom.
life. Yes, sir. Perhaps there's somebody here today and you've had a good life and you've been enjoying life, but now find yourself on the bottom. Right. You're on the bottom because some circumstances have occurred in your life. You maybe lost a loved one. Sickness has invaded your rank. Uh, your spouse has left you. You're in a predicament or you're in a situation where, where, where sometimes you feel uncomfortable. You're made to feel uncomfortable. And you find yourself on the bottom. Yeah. Well, if you keep living long enough, your yeah. bottom experience will surely come.
that we soon discover yeah. that there's somebody on the bottom with us. Yes, sir. I want somebody to know today that regardless of when you find yourself at it, David said that the righteous person may have many troubles. Right. And if you are a child of God, yeah. you can't expect to go through life and not experience some difficult. Right. You cannot expect to go through life and not have some unsettled. That's right. But David said the Lord delivers him yes, sir. from the wall. Yes, sir. He goes on to say that he protects all of his bones. Uh -huh. That means that we may not feel brokenness. Uh -huh. right. But it's one thing to feel brokenness and not be broken. Right. I wish I had somebody to pray. Yeah. The Lord will rescue you, sir. That's right. He say, no one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. In other words, David is trying to tell us that we need to hang on in there. Yes, sir. That there are going to be times in life when we are not going to feel like going in there. Yeah. There are going to be times that we're going to feel like throwing in the towel. That's right. Yeah. But when you think about what the Lord has done for you, yeah. when you think about where he's brought you to, yeah. somebody ought to be able to say, thank you, and say, the Lord is our shepherd. Yeah. Somebody ought to be able to say, thank you, and tell somebody that the Lord will make a way to God. I wish I had somebody praying with me. When I look back over my own life and I see where the Lord has brought me, I realize that he's brought me from a mighty long way. I realize that if it had not have been for the Lord on my side, I could not have made it this far. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Even when you find yourself on the bottom, when you find that light has pressed you down, when you find that people have forsaken you, when you find that your money is run out, when you find that your friends have departed and left you and you feel like you're all alone, you need to realize that there's somebody who will reach down on the bottom and pick you up out of the monkey's mouth. I wish I had somebody in friends. Some of us have found Jesus because we had to hit rock bottom first. In other words, some things had to run out. Yeah. Some things had to give out. Right. Some things had to give in. And right. Some things had to give up. Yeah. All of us to find the Lord. Yeah. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But I thank God yeah. that when I'm down, that's when he picks me up. I thank God that when I'm without, yeah. that's when he's best. Yeah. I thank God that when I don't have, that's when I can call on the name of the Lord. And he'll open up doors that nobody can close. I wish I had somebody praying with you. Have you ever been down? Have you ever been down? Have you ever been out? The Lord may be your God. He makes a way out of those ways. The God of the Bible. I'm so glad that I serve God. But when I feel low, He's right there with me. When I don't have anybody, I've got Jesus. And everything that I need. I'm so thankful that all my help comes from the Lord. Does anybody know the way to help? Won't God do it? Won't He make a way out of no way? The God of life. He has a way to smite spirit. And if that's not enough for you, let me remind you of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Uh -huh. Oh, when they scandalized his name. Yeah. When they led him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Uh -huh. He found himself on the bottom. Yeah. When they led him to go out the sheep. Uh -huh. When they hung him high. Yeah. And stretched him wide. Yeah. He was on the bottom. Yeah. And then when, he, when they hung him there. And they pierced him in the side. Uh -huh. And the blood came streaming down. Yeah. He found himself on the bottom. Yeah. When he went down. Yeah. And preached to self He found himself yeah. on the bottom. Yes, but I'm so glad yeah. that God the Father did not leave him on the bottom. Does anybody even know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because my Bible tells me that on the third day, yeah. he got up yeah. with all the power in his name. Because he lives, yeah. I can face the world. I'm so glad. Because he's not on the bottom. Right. We don't have to be on the bottom either. Right. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Won't God do it? Yeah. Won't he make the way out of the way? I'm so glad that trouble don't last the whole way. I'm so glad yeah. that I serve a God who is able yeah. to leave me right where I am. When life found out, yeah. I had a friend in Jesus. Yeah. When, when life was 
solutions to my problems. Yeah. I got somebody that cares about me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. All I see and briefs to bear.
Oh, we say thank you, Lord, for what you've done and what you're doing right here and right now. Lord, we lift up our community before you, Lord. All the violence and all the things that we're dealing with, Lord, we give it to you, Lord. Help us to be instruments. Help us to be vessels, Lord, that we can make all the difference in the world. Oh, Lord, we come to because we want to recommit ourselves up to thee. Oh, Lord, move on our behalf. Father, we ask you to touch John Perry. Give her the confidence and reassurance of knowing, Lord, that you with her every step of the way. And her body's going to be all right. Oh, be with her, Lord. Strengthen her spirit, Lord, in her heart. And she know beyond the shadow of doubt that she put out faith and trust in you. That everything's going to be all right. Oh, Lord, look throughout Jerusalem, Lord. Oh, shut the brother Hunter's heart, Lord. Let him know he's not alone in what he's going through, Lord, but you're with him every step of the way. And Lord, we lift up all those names of people that we've already called out in prayer once again, Lord. That you minister to their hearts. Just Jenny Bay this morning, Lord. Sister Price, Lord, bless her, Lord, and touch her in a mighty special way. Lord, continue to lift up. Reverend Phyllis Jones to you, Lord, that you continue to move on her behalf. Joanne and all those who confectionally come to know, Lord, and love, Lord. We ask that you move on our behalf. We're thankful, Lord, for what our hearts have felt. We're thankful for what our minds are feeling right now. And now, Lord, we ask that you continue to comfort our hearts, Lord. Bless us, Lord, we stand in need. We thank you for those who lost loved ones. Lord, strengthen their hearts. And let them know that you're with them every step of the way. Now continue to bless us, Lord, continue to look after us. For these noble blessings we ask and we pray. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we ask this prayer. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Of his Holy Spirit and rest with the Bible each of us henceforth and forevermore.